There we go. Good morning and or afternoon, people of the internet, and welcome to the IPFS documentation and developer UX working group. You can follow along with the agenda for this meeting, as with every agenda, a link in the GitHub repo, but I will also post it into the chat in this call. Looks like everybody has put everything they need to in here. Um, I'll add the leaders and so on and so forth. Uh, the one thing, um, please add yourself in the participants. Um, and I believe we have all the notes we need to in line in the agenda, but um, feel free to elaborate as we go along. So um, these are a little bit, the agenda is a little bit different than it has been just as we've been wrapping up all of the Q3 OKRs. Those are starting to drop off of this agenda as we have finished them. Um, that said, we need to finalize our Q4 OKRs by the end of this week. Um, Chris, a few things changed on these while you were away, so I wanted to make sure that you had time to weigh in on all of that. Um, specifically, there's an item related to metrics that we need to talk through. Um, I was hoping we could actually get some of this done in this meeting, but um, looks like we've actually got two emergencies that are keeping folks from being here right now. Uh, so we may need to table this until later. Um, but let's hold off on that for a second. Um, shall we talk to the rest of the items on the agenda? Um, Chris, it's not fair because you just got back from your holiday, but. Um, Docs platform, tech stack framework stuff. Um, do you think you'll be able to have a have that wrapped up by the end of the month? In, oh yes, yeah, we have to make a um, some kind of executive summary where at least I can collate uh, the research that I've done so far. So I think that's the primary thing um, to to basically consolidate this week. Um, I did. I think there were some things I didn't show last time I was here. Um, one was the prototype that I. Uh, I booted up with uh, Docusaurus. Um, uh, so I think I, uh, I'm going to show that very briefly now. Um, everyone likes a live demo, right? Especially after a holiday. Okay. So while I find my bearings again, let me see if this works. Uh, uh, da -da. Oh, yeah, here we go. Um, so share my screen. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I started working on just getting the first section of the guides into. Um, well, a basic new UI version of uh, Docusaurus, and this is using a V2 alpha. Um, I had a few, um, uh, I've had a bit of scouting around the forums and understanding like, what, where we are in position of the, the, the framework itself and what uh, what is outstanding in terms of development. Um, I will basically consolidate all of that research into uh, into a post so we can just like summarize and take uh, a decision from there. But for now, I just wanted to show like what where where we are and what we could use it for. Um, it's uh, you kind of get a basic presentation uh, like this with your table of contents on the left hand side, um, and then you get your sub table of contents on the right. Um, the this the, the whole platform has turned into a new plugin model, so essentially. Everything has been stripped back so that you just end up with this raw uh, markdown rendering display. Um, it works nicely um, with uh, responsive design. So if I open up and go into mobile mode, you can obviously get all the all the niceties that we can get from uh, for navigating our docs. Um, and also you get the, um, I can't get to it because the inspector, uh, you get a table of contents generated for, for each page as well. Um, so, I mean, the raw functionality of it works fine. Uh, we wouldn't, I haven't set up a, uh, a Godier on this for because you need to have a, a permanent uh, index indexable URL that's public that is defined with your doc set before you can have a search index. But essentially, this works as a plugin, so we'll be able to enable that and it would index the whole site. Um, and so, that is that part of it. Um, on terms, so yeah, I suppose actually to summarize this, I just need to write up um, some thoughts and to give you some um, uh, an overview of where, where we can take it from here. Um, I also want to boot up a uh, VPress demo this week and do a comparison between the two. Um, I think those are the primary winners unless we decide to go for a, a sort of basic implementation uh, on top of either what we've got with um, uh, yeah, some additional uh, additional changes. So. Um, yeah, and that's where I'll leave for now. But is, um, is it 
uh, that link um, I may will that link persist? The URL? Yeah, it, this this is a uh, this is public de deployed URL right now, um, okay. so you can access it. We can share this if needs be. Um, it was more for internal use, just yeah. for the showcase now. But uh, I would like the opinions. Um, uh, yeah, like to invite input opinions. Like, so I think we've got to figure out a way how we can capture that. One of the ideas was to use um, uh, that feedback tool to basically put in the priority, the feature priority options into a, a votable list so that we can then have some conversation around those. Because I don't think a, a single issue is easy to capture all of that feedback uh, directly. So what I'd like to do is actually break down the individual uh, features by priority, put them into some kind of votable um, UI and then one by one we can we can pull it out to everybody in the team so that people can say like this is super important and not so we can just get get a, a better uh, gauge on it because we've got our own priorities and I think uh, it'd be nice to tally that up with uh, the rest of the team and company and community. And that is that um, that is one of the items in our in our draft OKRs at this point. Even better than I'm skipping ahead of my, my future self. <laughs> um, uh, is that the draft OKR? For no, that would be a Q4, wouldn't it, of course, yeah. Yeah, um, I'm just trying to find, um, and it is... I'm still trying to find my way through this because everyone's just uh, just tuned yeah. in today and I've just got back, so. Yeah, that's um, that's item 2D um, in in the, um, and I'll link, it's in the, um, it's in the agenda, but I'll link it directly into the chat. That's item 2D there. Uh, quantitative voting-based testing to confirm good direction of the docs data. Um, and revise its deployment or future features deployment plans as necessary. So yeah. to have a, a voting mechanism of some sort on docs topics and or features. Yeah, so. I think that's just nice to have so we can actually then, um, we'll, we'll have our baseline priorities which will be at least uh, feature parity complete to what we already have, but then we want to prioritize one by one features that are coming up. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, that'll be led by the community and for uh, feedback. Yeah, and we can explore, um, you know, the sort of starting, starting and it's very basic. So something that we're, that we're socializing internally, but the idea of having that as something persistent in the docs beta um, to be able to have people continue to vote on, on ongoing direction um, would be awfully slick to have in there. So um, we left it fairly, we left the specs of that fairly vague in the OKR other than we want to have this thing up and running. Um, and we can pin that down into issues going forward. Cool. The three or four tools I played with that uh, would be suitable. They're, they've got different pricing models and depending on integration. So I'll just uh, I'll choose one to, to trial very soon. Great, great, great. Uh, just FYI, um, as of now, because we had to score the OKRs on Friday, I have left the I, I in your absence rated that as ninety percent finished. Um, once you are done with your executive summarizing, um, if you are. Um, if you feel confident in marking that 100% done yep. in the master spreadsheet, that would be fantastic. Just for the sake of honesty, that would be great. Anything else? Uh, no, I'll come back around to metrics when we get to it at the bottom. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I'll give you time to type frantically should you wish. <laughs> um, documentation specialist, uh, again, with respecting the confidentiality of clients as being a public call or, or um, confidentiality of applicants. I don't want to go into too much detail. We do have a meeting. We are on the agenda of the hiring panel today. Um, not quite sure when or the outcome of that, but uh, watch this space. Um, we've also, just Chris, for your benefit, um, started to make some progress in um, taking some of the candidates for our position and considering them as well for a Filecoin docs role. So um, hopefully that will get somewhere we had um, a little bit of progress on that on Friday, and I'm waiting to hear exactly how that turned out. Is that as a priority over our role, or is it just that they had better fit for that? Particular no, role? it's that um, they it's it's that the Filecoin folks haven't had time to do their hiring exercise, okay. and um, we may end up with more candidates than we need. So um, being Fair able enough. to you know, because to a certain to a certain degree. Um, everything that we've spoken to with all of our candidates so far, you could sub in the word Filecoin and get about 80% there. Um, so there's a, there's a fair amount of overlap between those two roles. And um, we ended up with some very, very talented people that we're trying to meet further. And um, just want to make sure we don't lose anybody if we can help it. 
So again, if you want to have like a, if you want to have an out of band discussion on that, totally happy to fill you in. Um, just want to respect everybody's confidentiality. Hate to be all weird on the recorded call. Um, and I respect anybody who may be listening in. Thank you for respecting those folks' privacy. <laughs> yeah. And in general, we should probably leave conversations like this for, for other forums because tons of people are encouraged to participate regardless of, of that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and the wonderful thing is, is we've also sort of on a related note, um, I did notice something coming up in the forums today talking about um, some of the conversations that we've had regarding um, sort of the very non-technical use case based discussions and, and why people might be wanting IPFS. Um, it's nice to see that coming up organically in in the forums um and i also want to i, I haven't because literally i just got up because it's monday and i'm feeling a little under the weather but um i, I do want to respond um to that in a way that encourages i mean it's it's it's, it's wonderful to hear uh, like somebody really clamoring for some non-technical use cases um or, or some use cases any non-technical level of detail but um but this does illustrate the need that, you know, the more contributors, the closer we are to actually achieving that goal. Um, you know, it's not number one on our priorities. It's like, gosh, it would be nice if it could be. Um, moving along, the goal-based persona stuff. I I had some really, really good interviews with folks at Textile and Query and Audius. Um, I incorporated um, a lot of details from those conversations into the persona doc, which I'd like to from the agenda. Um, <laughs> the biggest quantifiable change was making it explicitly clear that somebody is, is generally a developer and one or more other persona. But there was also um, there was there was talk among a couple of these folks to split out the developer persona, um, but not universal agreement as to how that might be bifurcated. Um, and I also want to review a little bit like the usefulness of splitting that out because I don't want to get too deep in the weeds at a persona level. Um, so I did add an issue in GitHub that I want to address in Q4 as to what to do about that. Um, so just, just so you all know that exists, but that said, um, it did, the, the discussions that we had in the interviews did reinforce that the persona are in, are in good shape. They're good, useful guides. Um, so we've um, listed those as a resource in the IPFS docs repo in the readme. Um, and then also that's that's actually one of the things um, that was name checked in the uh, forum discussion over the weekend. So so that's nice to know that people are already referring to that document. Um, that is ideally, um, and I didn't add this in the agenda, I'll do this real quick. Um, that is ideally some of the stuff that I want to lean on. There's going to be a Colorado, uh, a Boulder, Denver IPFS meetup on the 16th of October um, that's about... 80% confirmed is going to happen. Um, but if that does happen, the intent is to let anybody who wants to do a quick discussion with me on use cases and goals have free co working for the day at a local Boulder co working space. So um, that'll also give us another chance to sort of test out some of the, the persona stuff. And then also, if we have anything closer to that date that we must specifically lean on with anything in testing, um, we'll have an opportunity to do that as well. Um, moving on, yeah, okay, cool. Um, hot fixes. If you look at if if you look at anything that was in the hot fix OKR um, epic for Q three in either the docs or the website repos, uh, we managed to knock out more than twenty fixes this quarter. So um, you know, it's been. <laughs> just, just to say that you know we put a lot of emphasis because it's a very, it's been a very strategic quarter. We've been doing a whole lot of planning because we recognized pretty early on that we needed to do some heavy duty planning in order to make the execution actually great. Um, but just to say, you know, we have we have been doing a pretty good job of managing to actually tactically fix some stuff in the meantime, which is awesome. Um, at the end of the month, I'm going to take everything that was in that hot fixes OKR label bucket on GitHub and relabel those as OKR content improvements, since that's the sort of overarching bucket for our Q4 OKRs. Um, the agenda says seeking your help in t-shirt sizing them. I actually did that on Friday, so ignore that. Um, we have size labels in both the docs and website repos now, and I roughly t-shirt sized everything in there. Um, again, not wanting to get too down in the agile weeds on this. Um, the OKR label is going to be our tracking parameter for measuring how many fixes we do in Q4. Um, we have been using that hotfix label. 
hotfix ended up not being like entirely accurate and, and, you know, and people have different ideas of what a hotfix actually is. Um, so after a fair amount of discussion um, last week, the consensus and Chris, if you if you hate this, we can talk. Um, we reached the consensus that we we're going to put everything in this OKR content improvement bucket that 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 aligns with the overarching fix the docs tactically goal um, that we've got in the Q4 OKRs. And then in terms of finding bite size or discrete or non strategic issues, we can do that through a combination of viewing that epic the content improvement epic label, the t-shirt size label for how much time we had to devote to a thing, and then also the difficulty label. When I t-shirt sized everything, I also made sure that all every issue in both repos was also vaguely labeled with difficulty. Um, that should enable us to mobilize pretty quickly. And it's like, oh, I've got half a day. What can I do? Um, but if especially you, Chris, if there's anything you know, that, that you think may be a better way of organizing this, um, let me know. I, I think this should get us most of the way, if not all the way there, though. I know we don't have another meeting uh, to go over the OKRs, but should we try and get one in early before Thursday? Yes, we should, because the intent was to do this today, but, yeah, um, I can... but we had some emergency intervention. Okay. Um, you are... Um, you're in our latest time zone. Do you mind finding a good time for that to have that discussion? Yeah, sure. Um, um, uh, not to take up the school, but in, we could we could also chat very briefly after this if it's um, directly affecting myself or if we need to do the whole team together. Then um, I think sometime tomorrow. I think we still we do probably still need to have one more group discussion. But if you want to check in for a few minutes after this, I can sure. talk to you real quick about what's changed. And then if you don't mind trying to find something, yeah. Ideally tomorrow, an hour, that would be good. That would be- Yeah, that can work. That would be awesome. Metric stuff, what's new since you've been back uh, for like an hour? Well, interestingly, uh, there is something new, which I have noticed, is that um, the, if I share this with you, you can see that the, oh, move that out of the way, um, that the new IPFS explainer is getting the, the most love completely uh, so I don't know whether that's a bias or whether or not um, we've been clicking the yes, this is helpful, but uh, 16, 16 overall compared to so it's a, right now it's, it's the most help, helpful documentation uh, that nice. we've got out there. So people are clearly looking for beginner level material um, or they're finding that level of material more helpful than perhaps the way it's explained or at least at, at that language level. Um, and then obviously since some other things have surfaced in the last is uh, that the, yeah, so MFS may be worth revisiting. Um, and yeah, we can probably dig into this a little bit deeper, but I need to consolidate a couple of these because some are via gateway and some are uh, directly via URLs, but otherwise, yeah, we're doing okay. 81% helpful overall. Um, so that's obviously on the tool that we deployed is a little hotfix. Um, in terms of analyzing the further breakdown for the categories, this is going to take a little bit more time to, to basically decipher, but essentially we need to go through uh, this nice tree of logic uh, to understand how um, and why uh, people are operating in certain ways. Um, so far, you can kind of see that um, we have uh, primary most interactions on um, on uh, to open to which is on a published share your files which may be partly to do with bias towards uh, the ordering in the list um but then you can see that the final actions it was only a few percent there so actually it's people went on to go on go and um select a different uh, output based on uh, their action there so you can see you can either see whether they went to explore other things um or you can see whether they, they triggered final uh, final output events which is like 10 percent going to the doc site um, this I want to I want to basically surface the the individual numbers from this into a, a simple dashboard like this, so we can actually then just have some key numbers that we can just keep an eye on rather because every time you have to dig into this and do it in an individual root analysis, it takes time um, and it's not um, it's not particularly quantifiable. So we want to define what is it we're trying to get in terms of story from like uh, entry to exit and then see see the trends basically moving that way um, and then essentially we'll set a date range at the moment it's working within 28 days and hopefully gradually improve that date range um, the, the metrics towards like our, our primary targets so um, 
I don't know whether this will be encompassed in the, the Q4 OKRs. Um, I, th I think obviously we want to yes. put more metrics into there. Okay. Um, that's essentially where I'd like to suggest that we we spend that time and um, and figure out how we how we're going to do that. Um, uh, yeah, but for now, um, we're st it's, it's essentially it's a case of getting the obviously the, the plumbing in place to to start to measure those things, and then we can surface that up and hopefully improve it week by week. So we do have um, as part of the part of the sort of content improvement bucket of the OKRs, um, sort of two separate efforts for fixing you know, things that we've identified internally or inherited issues that we haven't addressed yet um, from the initial grooming of the repos, but then we've also got a separate OKR item for fixing things that have been specifically identified from the community through mm -hmm. forum posts or through through these metrics. So you know what you bring up about the, the MFS stuff, I think definitely neatly fits into um, something that we want to dig into and identify as a, as a community identified fix. Sweet. There's some very strange music in the background. Can oh, I'm that? sorry. Oh. I'm sorry. I can't do much about that, but I'll put myself on mute. Oh, is that? Um, <laughs> I thought I, I was imagining things. I was like, I thought no, 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 because we couldn't. Um, um, so, full disclosure, my partner has a music lesson in six minutes, um, yeah. and he was going to go downstairs, but on Friday, nobody could hear him. Um, but apparently, today, he's louder. So, apologies for that. It's nice. Is it it's an accordion or? It is. It is an. It is an instrument called the bandoneon, which is the thing that makes tango music sound like tango music. It's basically an enormous and and really difficult to play button accordion. The cats hate it. So um, so yeah. But but his um his teachers his teachers in New York. So it's uh so he, he has morning lessons here that are afternoon lessons for for, for the teacher. Um, uh, it's but now I'll, live I'll, on the yeah. internet, so you can you can give them feedback. So yeah, <laughs> yeah pe audience. people people on the internet, if uh, you want to you want to fill in on how, how well my partner is doing in his music lessons, let me know. You know where to find me on GitHub. Um, yeah. Proto school stuff. Jill, mm -hmm. where are we at? Uh, I only have uh, one one thing to to add to this meeting. Uh, I've been working on a new tutorial for Proto school for non MFS file, files API. And I've drafted two lessons currently. I'm working on the first, uh, the first uh, um, file upload lesson, coding lesson. So I'm still trying to get a hang, a hang of uh, the validation part of things. But it, I think it's going well. So hopefully, in a couple of weeks or so, we may have a new le a new tutorial there. That is fantastic! Yay! Yay. <laughs> I would applaud, but that'll just make more noise. Yeah, exactly. Quite clapping. <laughs> so we've got, we've got four more minutes. Um, I think we are, we are in a good place unless anybody else has anything that they want to bring up. Chris, if you don't mind, you and I stay on the call, have a quick chat. Um, and then, um, and then we'll schedule a separate meeting to go over OKRs, but I think things are, Things are in a good place for a Monday morning. Yep. Unless there's anything else I've missed in the last week um, from a previous meeting, we can summarize now, or we can do that one on one. I can just go um, and watch all the videos. Nothing, nothing <laughs> yeah. profoundly. I mean, it's it's really been a lot of it's been a lot of OKR iteration um, and wrapping up um, wrapping up a lot of the efforts. Um, yeah, yeah. I think I think anything any anything has been exposed in, in sort of GitHub. You know, if you were to go through your GitHub backlog, or we can talk through it, but yeah, yep. not not a whole lot that's directly impacted you. So super super okay. awesome awesome. Tell Stephen I want some of that tea and. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had um some some really good lemon tea yesterday. There's he has a whole sampler from his birthday and there. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. Um, I know it's not the the. Snootiest tea in the world, but I do live very close down the street from the Celestial Seasonings Herbal Tea Factory. Um, I love them. Oh, uh, seasonings are so good. Yeah, you yeah, um, come visit, do a tour. Um, they have an enormous mint room that you can, they, they have to sequester the mint so it doesn't pollute everything else. They'll open the door, you can go in. It takes about 10 seconds before it literally, like you, you think you might pass out. It's glorious. Um, and with that in mind, um, you know, any, anybody who uh, wants to co-locate with me, 
I, you know, I'm going to open this up to strangers in the community as well. If anybody wants to come and uh, be my note taker on the 16th in Boulder, Colorado for this user testing, because it's always better to not have to take your own notes. Um, I am freely requesting anybody to come hang out with me in Boulder. I'll take you to the tea factory. So. And on that happy note, I will, uh, I will stop this recording. Um, thank you, everybody, for all of y'all's time. And we shall see you again next week on the internet.